It's kind of hard sometimes to cover truly wireless earbuds because there's so many of them. And on any given occasion, you can find a pair that does one thing well, but not this other thing. They might fit well, but the sound isn't amazing. Maybe the sound is good, but there's no A and C. There's good A and C, but nothing special beyond just that. And so in the span of just a few short years, the wireless earbud space has become insanely diverse and saturated. So why should we get excited for something coming out of Google and not even a historically reputable audio focused brand? Well, because they try to provide each and every feature possible, even right down to having Google in your ear. And now with the latest edition, the rest of the feature list has gotten some extra attention too. Are these the buds that do the best? Well, it's hard to say, but I think they are certainly trying to do the most. And I am here for it. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? About 85% recovered. Let me give a quick thanks to everybody who sent me well wishes on the last video when I was really sick. But in any case, let's get into this one. Here is what worked and what didn't with the Pixel Buds Pro. In making a pro model, we now have the most advanced version of the Pixel Buds yet. And with the features that Google wanted to include this time around, the shape did have to adjust accordingly. Comfort is subjective and literally different for every person, so this slightly more bulbous shape of the actual buds will I think work for most, but maybe not fit for some. In my case, and I say this pretty much all the time, I have the most average ears of all time, but the Pixel Buds Pro do feel like they fit in my ears better than almost any other pair that I've ever used. And I mean that literally, they actually fill the entire space right outside of my ear canal, making it so that the buds anchor super securely unless I'm really sweaty or, let's say, greasy. And of course, the business end is an in-ear design, so you'll have those silicone tips providing targeted sound and the bass response that you would expect. Oh, and you might have noticed in that previous clip that I'm using Comply Foam Tips on here. These came in literally like a day or two ago before filming this video, so I'm trying them out now, but this video is basically about the experience when factoring in the tips that came with the buds. Anyway, back to the fit. It's like the buds were made using a mold of my ears, so of course I will give positive marks to the design and the comfort. But everyone's experience is of course very different. If you have used similarly sized pairs of earbuds in the past and you didn't like those, well, I wouldn't be surprised if you felt the same way about these. I'm sure a good amount of people will miss having like those stabilizing wing tips of the previous Pixel Buds and maybe other types of earbuds that you might have used. And I would too if these didn't already fit as well as they do in my ears. Ultimately, I'm just enjoying using them for long term use, which we'll get to more a little bit later. Aside from some shape shifting, the overall design language is still very Pixel Buds. The Pro model's case is a bit bigger, the buds have a deeper crevice to sink into, and the white exterior of that case is already far from pristine as you can see here. I've been using this all over the place already. But in typical Google fashion, the colors are quirky but also very sparsely implemented. As you can see here, only the outer portions of the buds get that splash of color. Now, ultimately, this isn't a huge deal, and I do love that this one is called Lemongrass, but I do think it would be nice if at some point the color could splash further out. I'm ready for these to stand out more for reasons other than a case that looks like an egg that fell in the dirt. Speaking of dirt, the IP Expert rating does mean that the Pixel Buds Pro can take some moisture, but obviously, it's not the highest rating out there. Of course, it's not all about looks, and Google usually does a good job of putting a lot of capabilities underneath the simplistic exterior. This case is capable of wireless charging, aside from the wired option here in the USB-C port. There's a button on the lower third here that can be held down to trigger the pairing mode, which is my preferred way of actually doing that. But connecting to Android phones in particular is a breeze because you also have fast pair. It's even better if you have it tied to your Google account. And if you move to another phone, another Android phone, it gives you the option to pull focus and then take that connection to to the Pixel Buds. On the Buds themselves, I'm particularly appreciative of the amount of controls available here. Hold on, let me go into the ambient mode. There you go, now I can hear myself better. Usually on other truly wireless earbuds, you're missing some sort of control. Oftentimes, it's volume control. But you can do various taps for playlist control, and then you can hold to trigger the Google Assistant, with swipes forward and backward also available for volume control. Not often do you get such a complete suite of inputs, and it gets even more expanded when you set the hold function to trigger the Google Assistant. In my case, I have the left earbud set so that when I hold it, I can change the sound mode, but if I have the right earbud in, that one will trigger Google Assistant, so I can choose what experience I want if I'm only using one earbud. And the Google Assistant integration is the type I always prefer. Press and hold onto it to talk to Google Assistant and then lift when finished. You can ask it to do a lot of stuff, even change the sound mode of the earbuds, which is useful because if you do choose Google Google Assistant while well, you replace that function for that whole gesture. Also, if you press and hold until you hear a chime and then let go, the Google Assistant will read out notifications. 
The Pixel Buds have always been a good way of accessing smart features that Google focuses on, and the new Pros definitely continue that in a way that doesn't require you to have your phone in your hand all the time. So it's great that with all of these capabilities, the Pro moniker can also be an indicator of battery life. Honestly, I think this is one of the most important benefits to the Pixel Buds Pro, because none of the things that Google puts in would mean anything if, after just a few hours, you're already set to take them out of your ears and put them back in their case. But the Pixel Buds Pro can go for like 11 hours, which is a number that we hardly see in many other offerings. Now, to be fair, uh, it's actually like 7 hours because 11 is achieved when not using ANC. But 7 hours is still basically a full workday. And if you're like me and you use one earbud until it's done and then you switch over, you're definitely good for an entire day. I tested out this battery life on a flight to New York City. For a traveler like me that usually brings over-ear headphones with strong ANC for long trips, Trips, I decided to go minimalistic and just use the Pixel Buds Pro. Of course, seven hours with ANC on is well beyond the five-ish hours of the actual flight, so I had no issues rocking out to some tunes to pass the entire time. Now, that being said, I do have to admit that the loud environs of the airplane, and despite the company of the most well-behaved little puppo in the seat next to me, the ANC that partly defines the Pixel Buds Pro is only slightly above average. Now, in the right scenario, any amount of noise cancellation will be appreciated, but I'm just spoiled by the high-performing ANC from competitors like Sony. I'll posit that this isn't a deal breaker because the ANC is still good, it's just not the best that I've ever experienced. One bright spot I will mention here though is that the amount of noise cancelled was still comfortable enough that alongside the vents for better airflow that are in here and the level of comfort that I feel with them in, the Pixel Buds Pro were actually pretty effective earplugs when I just wanted more quiet. I could pause all of my media and just sit back and enjoy the lesser amount of noise that was around me. But what was more disappointing to me was the ambient sound mode. Even right now when I'm trying to talk to you, I can hear myself, but it's not that great. Despite there being a mic array that is decent for audio and video calls, I mean, you're listening to it right now, I'm actually using the Pixel 6a because it allows for the usage of Bluetooth earbuds as the mic source, which is kind of cool. And this is what it sounds like with both of the earbuds in. So it's got a pretty good mic array, but unfortunately they don't support the pass-through audio well enough to make it a killer feature. And finally, I'll end this portion with the sound quality, even though it's actually the bright spot. My reaction to the Pixel Buds Pro was that the sound was clean. That was the word that kept coming up, clean. It's got enjoyable bass that doesn't muddy the rest of the spectrum, voices are nice and resonant through the low to mid ends, and it's only at the highest volume levels that I felt a bit of a pierce from the higher frequencies. Repeat sessions of FM 84s running in the night were still properly immersive, bringing me those infectious 80s vibes. My point in bringing up the sound quality here is that it isn't extraordinary, but it is quite good. I hesitate to say that the Pixel Buds Pro are just an exercise in quantity over quality, but it is definitely one way you can look at it. Because you know what? Sometimes quantity is quality, especially when there are so many examples of alternative options that fall short of providing this level of capability. From the abundant controls to the Google Assistant integration to the satisfying if not mind-blowing sound to the fantastic battery life, the Pixel Buds Pro fall into the win column for me because of how much it can do well and how much it does well enough. And that actually sounds like another pair of earbuds you might be familiar with, ones that are easy to recommend if you're on a certain ecosystem. Perhaps you can say those loyal to Android, perhaps to Pixels in particular, now have their own version of the AirPods Pro. And that's a really good thing, especially if you're all about the Google Assistant and you want to have it at the ready, well, that's just icing on top of the cake. A good sounding cake, if you will. And at $199, the Pixel Buds Pro are a good companion to your Pixel or your Android that might not be the best, but they certainly do the most. For more on audio products like the Pixel Buds Pro, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Sound off by hitting the like button and by getting into the comment sections down below. With all that said, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody.